In this video, I'm going to show you how to create flying in from the sign text or graphic objects. So first, I'm going to show you how to make text slide in gently from the side. And to do that, I'm going to create our text first by grabbing a type tool. And I'll type out something this can be very useful for intro introductory slides or transition video clips where we're revealing some information. So let's say in this case, I am showing the name of someone, maybe their name and age, their name and occupation, like you often see in some TV shows. And in the Essential Graphics panel, here's where I can make the text exactly how I want. So I want to perhaps make this font smaller. And I can also change the fill and the stroke and do different stylistic things, change the font to different things that I want. But basically, once I have my text graphic or title created, I want to add some keyframes to make it slide in from the side. So in the Effects Control panel, we can see the position of our clip. And if you ever click on the Selection or Move tool, you can highlight that graphic as well. And you can move it around visually. So I wanted this is a nice kind of space right here. I feel like but I'm going to add a keyframe at the very beginning on the position. And we're going to move the X keyframe all the way here. So it's starting off the screen, we can see that red box, and then I'm going to move forward just a couple seconds. And I'm going to make it come in inland in that final position. So we have two keyframes. Now it slides in from the side, just like that. But the key trick here to make it look a lot more smooth is to change these keyframes from the linear type to ease. In. So if I right click this, change it to ease in interpolation, then the two won't have like just the same movement. It'll slowly ease into place there, you can kind of see it. If I drop down this thing, you can see the velocity is a slightly different, and I can even make it ease out of the first keyframe. So we have a gentle increase and decrease in motion, which is a little bit more sleek, in my opinion. And then once our text is on the screen for as long as we want, we can then repeat the same thing except backwards. So I'll click this diamond to add a keyframe or in the same spot as we were. And then I can simply just copy and paste the other keyframe. So I'll copy and paste it. You could technically copy and paste both. And I just want to change it this time to ease out and ease in. And if I press play, now we get to ease in. It's on the screen for a couple seconds. And then we slide out the other side. And you can do the same process for logos, graphics, PNGs. It's the same idea. You start off the screen, let's say to the left, add a keyframe move over, add a keyframe to where you want it and then just make some slight adjustments to the keyframe interpolation to give it that more sleek look. And then once we're ready to slats exit to the other side, this time, I'll just simply copy and paste the keyframes, but reverse the order of them. So ease out and ease it, and we can make things slide in from the sides of the screen. I can stagger these a little bit maybe. So we're making these slide in and then slide out, and I just chose to slide them in from the right and left but there's no reason you couldn't do the same thing with the Y parameter for the top and bottom. As an alternative advanced tip, if you ever use the transform effect in the effects control panel, it's under the distort folder and add that onto the graphic or text. And instead of using the position keyframes on the actual clip, we use the position movement on the transform panel and we just uncheck use composition shutter angle and we turn up the shutter angle here. We can actually use this to get a little bit of motion blur as well. So the same idea, adding a keyframe on the position, starting to the side and bringing it in a little bit. And if I press play on that with the shutter angle, that will also give us a little bit of blur. If that's the look that we're going for to that's just another tip, whenever you're using the transform menu, you can get motion blur with the shutter angle and you can apply transformations separately from the clip properties but either way you get your final result. If you enjoyed this video, definitely check out some of my other effects and tutorials for different pop-up effects and more and subscribe to stay tuned for all my new videos. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.